Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. On this day, the Feast of the Epiphany, the Church commemorates, celebrates this great manifestation of Christ to the nations, to the nations represented by those three kings, the three wise men that the liturgy, the readings talk about. Notice how this manifestation takes place. You know, if we think about how we want God to manifest Himself, we want God to come with some giant big sign, a large explosion, maybe a large neon sign saying, here, I'm here, maybe some fireworks, a big entourage, lots of people, tamasha, band, baja, you know, like a barat or something like that. That's how we want God to come. But how is it that God actually comes? How is it that He manifests Himself? In silence, in quiet, in the most unexpected of ways, in fulfillment of all the prophecies of revelation, but in the most unexpected of ways. Notice the responses to the revelation of God. You have three different responses. You have first of all King Herod, who is threatened by God's revelation. This is a king who is going to take away my kingdom. And so he responds in hatred. You know, the very day after Christmas, two days after Christmas, we have the celebration of the Feast of the Holy Innocents, the sign of Herod's hatred being taken out on innocent children, right? And we do this too because we think that in responding to God's revelation, to the gospel, our own comfort and our security will be compromised. And so we shy away or sometimes we respond with hatred. And there are certainly those outside the church who look at the gospel and look at the gospel with hatred. Then there are those who respond with sort of indifference. You know, these wise men come all the way from the mysterious east, from Persia, that's what the scholars say. And they come to Herod because they have seen the signs that this star is going to lead them to God. But the ones who are the guardians, the custodians of the revelation, that is the scribes, the Pharisees, the wise men that Herod consults, how do they respond? They say, oh yeah, he's supposed to come in Bethlehem. You guys go. And we'll get back to our own everyday business. They respond sort of with indifference. Right? How is it that we, so many of us who've grown up in the church, we are the bearers, the custodians, the guardians of this revelation. How do we respond? Oh, it's Christmas time, time to make our sweets and put up the star and the decorations and do all these things. But do we pay attention to the central mystery? Or is it just something we do? They have Diwali, they have Eid, we have Christmas. It's just another thing, you know, everyone has their own festivals. And we go about our business. And basically what the star that guides our light, our life, is the same thing that guides everyone else. How can I get more money, more honor, more success? And then there is the response of the shepherds and of these three wise men and of the poor, which is the response of adoration and worship. The shepherds, they hear the news from the angels and they run to the stable of Bethlehem and they fall down and they adore and worship. The wise men who have been searching for God their whole life, they come to a foreign land in response to something that appears in their life from outside the star. They listen to the revelation from the Bible and they go and worship and adore. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Feast of the Epiphany, the manifestation of the revelation of God, hidden before all ages, as St. Paul tells us, for all eternity, now being made publicly revealed, is for us a reminder that we, we, don't treat this simply as just another thing that we do because we happen to be Catholic. We were born into a Catholic family, maybe. But that God has spoken and revealed Himself to us through 
the prophecies, through the scriptures, through the ongoing presence of God in the teaching of the church and in the great consecration each of us has received in holy baptism. How is it that we respond to what God has done in our life? Do we treat it as a matter of, oh yes, that's what we do and now let's go back to our life? Do we feel threatened by it? That by what God asks of us, somehow is going to upset the way we have arranged our own life? Or do we, like the poor, like the shepherds, fall down in adoration? And notice what the scriptures say about the shepherds, that they go and spread the news all around the country. He who has encountered Christ, he who has encountered Jesus, his or her life cannot be the same. Do our lives manifest the fact that we have encountered Him? Do we, when we go out of here, having received Him, received the one true God here on this altar in the most holy sacrifice of the Mass, in the Eucharist, this amazing miracle that we are privileged to participate in every single time we come to Mass. Do we go out just the same sort of do our dhakka mukhi out there and sort of make a beeline for the rickshaw, whatever it might be. Are we transformed? In this Mass, on this feast, let us ask the Lord to manifest Himself in a new way in each of our hearts so that our faith is not a matter of routine, but every day wakes up in amazement at the gift that we have been given and entrusted with. So that the life of Jesus, as it takes more root in us, that light that He has given us can be manifest around us. So that our lives are transformed, our families' lives are transformed, our neighborhoods, our city, our society, our country, our whole world. Let us ask that each of us be an agent of Christ's epiphany today on this grace feast. And through the graces of this Eucharist, may what we ask for truly take root in our life and come to fruition.